Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. Navy to Magoot Tower. Navy to Magoot Tower. This is Navy 25601. Do you read? Over. There's that interference on UHF board again. I wonder where it's coming from. Mayday, Mayday. Navy to Magoot Tower. Magoot Tower to Navy 25601. We're socked in here. Visibility zero. Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. This is Navy 25601. We have a fire in the starboard engine. We're losing altitude. Need emergency approach bearing and instructions. You copy. Over. GCA Tower. We have an emergency over the field. Man the trailer immediately. No reply. How about the transmitter? Transmitter checks okay. Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. Navy to Magoo Radar. Navy to Magoo Radar. Hey, I've got the code 77 emergency squad. There's the aircraft trying to call us through the interference. Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. This is Navy 25601, approximately five miles south of Magoo. Altitude 1500 feet, losing altitude. Need immediate approach bearing. Please come in. Navy 25601, this is Magoo Radar, roger. Radar contact, five miles south, turn right heading 010, turn straight in landing, over. Navy 25601, roger, turning to 010, pretty low now, hope we can make it. Navy 25601, Magoo Radar, do you copy, over. Navy 25601, Magoo Radar, do you copy, over. The dramatization you have just seen is an example of what can happen. Receivers from garage door openers can and have jammed transmissions on aircraft control frequencies. Aircraft crashes in San Clemente and West Germany have actually been caused by shore emitters. The complex electromagnetic system environment in which Navy subsystems and platforms must operate brings with it the possibility that electromagnetic interference, or EMI, may seriously degrade the performance of electronic systems and even lead to loss of lives. In the days of sailing ships, the electromagnetic spectrum was empty except for natural sources such as solar static, lightning transients, and planetary and galactic noise. With increasing demands for command, control, communications, and intelligence, and the growing use of a wider range of frequencies, the electromagnetic spectrum has grown much too crowded. Navy weapon systems now have increased electromagnetic vulnerability due to more sophisticated components. Greater control of EMI has become an operational necessity. The purpose of this film is to show just a few of the problems caused by electromagnetic interference, and some of the ways it has affected and degraded the operations of Navy weapon systems in the past. The most important natural sources of EMI problems are electrostatic discharge, P-static, and lightning. As an aircraft or platform moves through charged rain, snow, or dust particles, or through local electric fields, it can pick up electrostatic charges on ungrounded surfaces. When charges accumulate to a sufficient level, a corona discharge occurs, sometimes visible as St. Elmo's fire. This electrostatic discharge can create P-static interference on HF and UHF channels and grass on Loran navigation scopes. The use of electrically heated, uncoated, de-icing glass or plastic can lead to eerie glowing shapes moving across the canopy which can distract air crews during crucial instrument landings. Electrostatic charges can discharge into the heating circuitry or even puncture the windshield. Because of their large blade surface areas, helicopters are prone to electrostatic discharge problems. Ground crews unloading hovering helicopters have gotten strong shocks. The explosion of this helicopter was later found to be caused by electrostatic discharge in the fuel tank. In short, static electricity can lead to various EMI problems. Besides radio interference, lightning causes several other EMI-related problems. The initial very short high-current pulse of a lightning stroke 
can do physical damage to structures. If this initial pulse finds its way into a weapon system's electrical or electronic circuitry, the damage can be massive. Longer pulses at medium current levels can pit or burn through metal skin or vaporize plastics and composite materials. As the lightning stroke causes jewel heating of thicker or more resistive metals, hot spots are formed that can cause fuel tank explosions. A lightning stroke that does not pass directly through electronic or electrical circuitry can still induce a magnetic pulse current surge that can disable electronic circuitry. This can be particularly dangerous for aircraft when both navigational instruments and communications gear are burned out at the same time. Such lightning-induced current surges have also caused fuel tank or ordnance explosions when induced currents caused currents to flow through crucial wiring. Without a doubt, the majority of EMI problems are man-made and are the result of inadequate design, inability to co-locate equipments to achieve compatibility, or just poor planning and lack of understanding of the engineering requirement. Some of the early failures in the ballistic missile and space programs were later traced to EMI. In this case, the operation of a nearby radar caused incorrect commands to reach the guidance system of this Atlas missile. The resulting destruction of this missile cost millions of dollars in equipment and program time and might have resulted in loss of lives. EMI emitted from one subsystem of an integrated weapon system can cause problems in other subsystems. During initial integration testing of the high-frequency communications equipment of this aircraft, it was discovered that EMI was causing the aircraft's control surfaces to flutter during voice transmissions. Errors in the aircraft's navigational computer and erratic fuel quantity indications were traced to the same source. The expected performance of the aircraft was so greatly degraded that unusual modifications were required to solve these problems. To prevent degradation by EMI, all Navy systems must undergo trade-offs of technical improvements versus the susceptibility characteristics of the systems, as well as meet a series of stringent EMI standards. However, testing to these standards is not always a simple procedure. Consider the problem of an electromagnetic engineer required to test for EMI in an ambient test environment. Meaningful EMI test measurement requires that only RF frequencies and power levels of known value be present in the test area. However, there is almost no working environment without some sort of EMI pollution. Sometimes there's just too much ambient EMI to do free space EMI testing. Test and maintenance equipment can also be sources of EMI problems. In this case, a non-standard method of testing this aircraft's IFF, or identification friend or foe, was being used. Signals from the test set activated the IFF transmitters of many aircraft in the region. As a result, all the IFF scopes in the region were crowded with a bewildering number of responding aircraft, making the system useless. There are literally thousands of ways that EMI can make a complex weapon system perform improperly. Here, the launch of a target drone is being attempted. EMI has caused the booster rocket to ignite, but the drone's main engine has not. The result? A lost drone and an aborted mission. The topside environment of a modern Navy ship with its many transmitters and antennas is an area of concentrated EM fields where many EMI problems occur. This drone helicopter had a history of EMI problems dating back to 1964. Analysis of EMI incident reports revealed these drones to be susceptible to EMI from shipboard air search radars. As a result, Several of these drones were destroyed or damaged beyond repair during fleet operations. An extensive modification of the drone's electronic control system was necessary, requiring both expensive and time-consuming onshore R&D and sea trials. One has to add another factor to the dense electromagnetic environment aboard a modern Navy ship. A combat-ready ship is heavily loaded with fuel and ordnance, both of which are susceptible to ignition 
by electrostatic discharge and EMI under proper conditions. The following incident is not a dramatization. It happened to the carrier Forrestal off Vietnam on the afternoon of July 29, 1967. While an aircraft was taxiing into position for launch, it was exposed to the main beam of a ship radar system. The electromagnetic energy penetrated cables in the rocket arming mechanism and caused the ignition of a Zuni rocket. The result was a massive fire on the flight deck. Casualties were 134 killed or missing. Some firefighters were actually blown off the deck by a series of explosions. Damage was $72 million, not counting the 27 lost aircraft. Although EMI is a continuing threat to Navy operations, the facts are that fleet operations continue around the clock. Aircraft still fly millions of miles each year. Submarines still patrol for many months at a time. And shore facilities still carry out their assigned functions. Given knowledge and understanding of the EMI threat, it can be anticipated and overcome. We must be vigilant and protect vulnerable Navy electromagnetic systems against EMI, the silent threat.